Good morning, dear friends in Christ. On this first Sunday in Advent, as you can see, our first Advent candle is lit for this morning. And as we begin our season of Advent, we are preparing ourselves for the arrival or coming of Christ. That's what the word Advent means. And we start in what may seem like a strange place. We start in Jerusalem, as Jesus is riding in on the back of a small donkey colt, journeying to the cross. Our text today is the same one that's often read during Palm Sunday. However, it is also appropriate now as we look forward to the coming of our Lord and King, not only at Christmas, but also on the last day uh, when he rides in in victory. Riding in on a donkey, our King never comes as we expect, but always as we need him. And by humble means, our Lord comes to us to bring salvation, ultimately through his cross. So as we travel through the season of Advent, let us always keep the cross at the forefront of our minds. Uh, dear friends, if you'd like to follow along with our service, you may do so by turning to page 260 in your hymnal. Uh, we will also be using the Advent responses, uh, since it is the first Sunday of Advent. So friends, let us begin. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God shall come. He does not keep silence. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the skies rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation may sprout forth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy will you draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted, the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday in Advent is from Isaiah chapter 64. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God besides you, who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry, and we sinned, and our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like pol a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I give thanks to my God always for you, because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him. In all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end. Guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 11th chapter. When they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. He shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Dear friends, we continue confessing our one Christian faith, starting with the Ten Commandments, found on page 264 of your hymnal. Let us begin. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Once again, our text for this first Sunday in Advent is from the Gospel of Mark. And Mark shares with us, he says, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. 
If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it. And we'll send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Now many of you are familiar with this passage. It's the same passage as the one we read for Palm Sunday. And you may be asking yourself, why are we, are we reading that passage now? After all, it's almost Easter, isn't it? Not, or almost Christmas, not Easter, right? And that's a very good question. Why do we read this passage at the beginning of Advent? Well, in order to answer that question, we must first understand what Advent is. The word Advent means arrival or beginning or coming. It's the start of something big. This text is really a great text that reminds us of what the the arrival or coming of Jesus really means for us. And it reminds us of how he would arrive on this earth. Jesus' appearance here is almost a mere image of how he entered into the world. Once again, Jesus was born in a lowly manger, humble and meek. And now in our text, Jesus rides in on the back of a young, unridden, unbroken donkey. Surely a king would ride in on something more regal. Surely the Son of God would enter into this world with more of a bang than simply being born in a barn. But as I've said many times before, Jesus never does the expected. In our text, there are many gathered around him, laying their cloaks before him, singing his praise. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. If you remember last week in Ezekiel, our Lord said, I will appoint one shepherd over them, my servant, David. Shortly after Jesus' birth, we see shepherds and wise men searching for the new king of the Jews. And when they see this child, they instantly know that this was the one who was promised. They lay their gifts before him and in great joy bow down and worship him. The people likewise in our text cry out, Hosanna, which means save us now. Mary and Joseph named the little child Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. They name him Emmanuel, meaning God with us. So perhaps now you can see the significance of this text being read for the first Sunday of Advent. As Jesus marches to the cross in our gospel text, He also marches to the manger in Advent. And throughout this Advent season, we are preparing ourselves for the arrival of our King. And certainly there are some strange preparations to be done before the Advent of our King. In our text, we see the Lord tell his disciples to go and secure a colt, a small young donkey upon which no one has ever sat. And if you've ever seen a donkey or met a donkey, you know that they can be one of the most stubborn beasts on the planet. Donkeys often kick and rebel against every command. They try to throw you off or buck you off. When you want to go left, they go right and vice versa. So imagine for a moment one that hasn't even been trained to have riders on it yet. Why would Jesus choose such an animal as this? Well, certainly our Lord is used to stubborn, ornery creatures. After all, Jesus deals with us on a daily basis. There are many times when when we simply don't want to listen to our Lord. I want to do my own thing, we think. When Jesus says, go right, we go left. The old Adam in me wants to rebel. The prophet Isaiah put it this way. We have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. 
There are moments when we know what we are supposed to do, but we just don't feel like doing it. I know I should help my neighbor with that heavy bag, but I just don't want to. I would rather get inside my warm house as fast as possible. I know I shouldn't get angry with my brother or sister, but they just make me so mad. And it feels good to just yell at them. I know I shouldn't cheat on my spouse, but this person makes me feel special. I know I should go to church, but I was out all last night, and I could really use the sleep. We all know what we should do, but the question is, do we always do it? And I think we all know the answer to that question. Paul also reminds us in Romans, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are rebellious, stubborn creatures. But the Lord loves us anyways. In fact, he loved us enough to send his son. Jesus is the very reason that we celebrate Advent and all the other seasons of the church here. Christ rode in on this stubborn donkey, but it didn't buck him off. Instead, it calmly carried the king to the people. And the king rode in to the cries of Hosanna, save us now. And that's exactly what Jesus came to do. That's really what the season of Advent is all about. It's all about Christ coming. Coming to save his people from their stubborn, sinful hearts. And how did Jesus Christ accomplish this, you may wonder? Well, our Lord came into this world as a little baby, small and humble. Jesus was placed in a manger, a feeding trough for animals. Our Lord took on human flesh and entered into our world. Jesus shared in our pains and sorrows. As as our Lord grew in stature and wisdom, he ministered to his people. Jesus brought good news to a people who had been suffering in their sins. And at the end of his ministry, Jesus finally turned his face to Jerusalem where he would go to die on the cross for the sins of his people, to finally answer those cries of Hosanna. Jesus would conquer death, sin, and that most stubborn creature of all, Satan. If ever you needed a reminder of what Christ came to do, you can simply look to the animal that Christ rode in on. There's an interesting fact about donkeys, on the backs of donkeys, you will find the symbol of Christ's grace. Did you know that donkeys bear the image of the cross as two black lines intersect upon their backs? If you haven't seen it before, I'll attach an image for you, for those of you at home, or you can just go on Google and type in uh, donkey cross, and you should be able to find uh, what I'm talking about. So a donkey's been marked with the cross. Whether or not that was a happy accident or God's intended purpose, we don't know. But we can learn from it. Dear friends, you also have received the mark of the cross both upon your hearts and upon your minds as in baptism. You received the forgiveness of sins through that same gift, through God's word and through the precious gift of Holy Communion. We who were stubborn, disobedient creatures are now the very ones who have been called to share Christ with the world. Just as that young colt carried Christ to the people in Jerusalem, we Christians now bear Christ upon our hearts and lips to the world. Paul said to the Corinthians this morning, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge. You see, the grace of Christ changed the Corinthians, leading them to profess Christ to the world, to proclaim his arrival, his death, his resurrection, and his promised return to everyone. That's what God's grace is able to accomplish God's grace is able to transform us sinners into his children. We who were dead in our sins are now made alive by the very blood of Christ. We who were once disobedient, stubborn donkeys have become blessed children of God who desire to do God's will, 
through the work of the Holy Spirit. We have been marked with the cross of Christ, and now we proclaim the coming of the King and His kingdom. That's the reason we get to celebrate the season of Advent. We look forward to the arrival of our King, to His Advent, especially on that last day where we will finally dwell with our God in His heavenly kingdom for eternity. The season of Advent prepares our hearts for His return, for His second coming. And it gives us time to reflect on what the arrival of our King signifies to us. For the people in our text, they thought it meant an end to their earthly oppression by the Romans. But for us Christians, it means so much more. Advent reminds us of Jesus' coming long ago, not to free people from the bondage to the Romans, but to free them and to free us from sin, death, and the devil. Advent prepares us for Jesus' arrival in that little manger on Christmas morning. And it also points us to the, his arrival in Jerusalem, where Jesus would face the ultimate punishment for our sins. But it doesn't end there. Once again, we must always keep in mind that the cross is not the end of Christ, because Jesus also rose from that tomb and ascended into heaven, where he gave us the promise that he would return. Advent ultimately points us to Jesus' return when we will see the kingdom of heaven coming for ourselves. And we wait with eager hearts and in great anticipation for his arrival on Christmas morning and for his return on that last day. No longer are we the stubborn creatures we once were, but blessed children sitting and waiting for their Messiah to come again. So my dear friends, have patience. Jesus will come again. He has promised, and he has always kept his promises. So until that day, may the peace of Christ be with you as we wait for the advent of our King. In Jesus' name, amen. And dear friends, once again, if you would like to submit your offerings to the church, you may do so by uh, mailing it to P.O. Box 35, Eagle Bend, Minnesota, uh, for Emmanuel Lutheran Church, or to St. Matthew's Lutheran, Lutheran Church, P.O. Box 425 in Clarissa, Minnesota. Also, simply go online to eaglevalleylcms.org, click on our donation page, and you can click on either church, uh, set up a one-time gift or recurring gift. And once again, may the Lord richly bless you with all that you need. Dear friends in Christ, let us go to our Lord in prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the gift of divine peace and a pardon with all our heart and with all our mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this nation, for our cities and communities and for the common welfare of us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our brothers and sisters who are unable to worship with us in the care centers, and those who are at high risk, for an end to this pandemic, for peace among all people, for those who have requested our prayers, especially for Duane and Joanne, as they continue to improve at home, for Ken Dravila, who is now home and continues to undergo medical treatments, for Hank and Ardeth as they continue to recover from COVID at home. For Randy Lavoie, who recovers now at home, and for his family as they also continue to recover from their illnesses. And for all others who ask for our prayers who are sick with this virus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And dear friends, we pray together Luther's morning prayer found on page 266 of your hymnal. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Raised from the dead, he will never die again. Death has no more dominion over him. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Dying, Christ dies to sin once for all. Living, he lives to God. Count yourselves as dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. And dear friends, before we depart this morning, just a few announcements for you. Our special service for our high-risk members will be next Sunday, December 6th at 12 o'clock over at St. Matthew's. Uh, once again, masks are required uh, for the service. Communion also will be provided. Uh, there will be confirmation class uh, this Sunday, so please be aware of that at 3 o'clock to 4.30 here at Emmanuel. Um, also, needed their, uh, Salvation Army bell ringers are needed for Coburns and Long Prairie. Uh, they will be inside for that as well. Uh, now through Christmas Eve. Uh, due to COVID-19, there's been a huge shortage of volunteers. Uh, if you're interested, you can please contact Fran at the Todd County Chaplain's Office at 218-851-2377. Um, Church Council will be meeting this Sunday night, uh, November 29th, uh, at 6 o'clock here at Emanuel. We will be meeting upstairs just to help spread anybody uh, out so we're not so close together. And also coming up are our Advent Midweek Services. The first one will be December 2nd uh, here at Emmanuel at 7 o'clock. So we invite you to join us for that as we look at uh, looking at the passage regarding Jesse's tree. And that'll kind of be our theme for this Advent season. Um, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day services, times may change uh, due to COVID-19. So please continue to look at our online calendar uh, for the most up-to-date information. If anything changes, that'll be the first place I'll be able to update it. Also, there will be no social hours uh, before or after these uh, midweek services at this time. Uh, so please keep that in mind as well. Also, just to add, we do have Marge Dar's funeral this December 4th. It'll be a private ceremony for just the family. Uh, once again, they'd like to thank you for your, your prayers and your well wishes uh, due to COVID-19 and, and the rise in our community. Uh, they just thought it uh, best to... Uh, keep everybody safe by just having it for the family. So there will be an online service posted in a few weeks, uh, depending on whenever I get the, the film back of the recording. And also there might be a celebration of life coming this summer. Uh, so hopefully COVID-19 will be gone and we'll be able to join together again. And then you can uh, celebrate with the family the life of Marge. And so uh, we'll keep you updated as those details come out. So uh, thank you for respecting the family's wishes and for their con and. Uh, for honoring their concerns. And dear friends, may the Lord continue to bless you this Advent season. If you're at home sick, we pray that the Lord would be with you and bring you back to full health. And we hope to see you in God's house as we continue through our, throughout our Advent season, uh, journeying all the way to Christ's birth in Bethlehem. So the Lord be with you all, and we hope to see you soon. Go in God's peace. Amen. <laughs>